Hey everyone and welcome to Wicode, where in this video I'm going to show you how to create a load balancer with Nginx for node servers using Docker Compose. So as an example, if you look in the console right here, maybe I have to zoom in one more, you can see we have three servers, each listening on their own port and own host. These hosts right here are of course within the Docker network, and what we have is Nginx listening, if we look in our Docker Compose file, Nginx will be listening on its own port, which is from this env file, port 999. So if we send a curl to this port, for example, let's, um, what I did is I created a simple script file that will send a curl to Nginx like this. If we run this test file, we can see all of our servers that have been called. And we can see how Nginx, from the configuration we're gonna make, calls each server. So it'll forward the quest request to each server in our backend cluster. And not only that, but we're gonna learn how to set a wait on these servers so that one will receive more requests than the others. So for example, we can here see here that server one was called, then one again, two, one, three, one was called four times in a row. So we can see server one is favored. Uh, we're gonna learn how to do that. And all these servers have the same code in them. So they all have this simple code right here with no libraries. We're just using the core node HTTP module. And we can see our Nginx container logs here for where it's redirecting all these requests to our upstream servers. And not only this, but we also have, because we're using Docker volumes, I've made it so we have live code updates. So if you're in development, let's say we can do console.log stall my, stall my Chrome extension whip scepter, which if you want to do that, feel free. Um, you can see it logged out here instantly. Um, so we're going to have live changes and all this kind of stuff. But so, all right, let's start building. But so before we actually get into the code, I want to go over real quick just what a load balancer is. So a load balancer takes incoming requests from clients and distributes them among a group of servers. For example, say right here we have an internet that, can, that is for wiccode.com and it has multiple backend servers. So this is essentially what we're gonna build in this video. We have a node server here, one here, and one here, and this is Nginx. Well, when a client makes a request, this load balancer, which is Nginx, will intercept it and then forward it to a selected server. The server will then handle the request, which is our node server, respond back to the load balancer, and then the load balancer forwards the response back to the appropriate client. And load balancers are helpful for sites that receive a lot of traffic and requests. For example, a ton of requests might be too much for a single server to handle. To handle this, multiple servers can be deployed. These servers often host the same content, which is what we're doing in this video, and the load balancer distributes the requests among the servers in a way that optimally uses each server. This prevents the servers from overloading and making maximum use of each server's capacity. All right, so we've got the concept out of the way. Now let's start building this. And so to start, I'm just gonna have an empty directory. And to begin, we're actually gonna create an environment variable folder or file called .env. And I'm just gonna paste in these environment variables. And so what these environment variables are is they're gonna be used by Docker Compose to set the location of our node servers and Nginx load balancer in the Docker network. So we can see our host and port for each of our node servers and then our Nginx host port. And each server that we have here will have the same code. They'll just be running at a different location in the Docker network. So now let's set up our node project. And the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna, actually before we do this, we're gonna create two folders, one for our server code and one for our Nginx configuration. Now we're gonna change into the server directory and initialize it as an ES6 project. And now we're also gonna install, the only package we're gonna install is nodemon as a development dependency. And this is so that we can get our live code updates with using uh, that we're going to do also by using Docker volumes. And now let's create our HTTP server. And that's going to be inside a source folder. And it's just going to be called server.js. And in here, all we're going to do is use the built-in HTTP module. We're going to create a server, an HTTP server from it. We're going to, on a request, we're just going to send back the server host and port. So we get these from environment variables. And then we're just gonna send them back. And this is essentially so we know which server is responding with the request. And that's all we're gonna do with our node code. So each of these node servers that we have here will be a Docker container with their own server host and server port. And this is because the way we do this, and we'll see this more uh, later on, is because each container will have different environment variables loaded into it. And we'll do this uh, with Docker Compose. Now inside our package.json file, let's set our entry point to the application. And then we'll just create a simple start script that will use Nodemon to run this entry point. So that's all we need to do for our code. 
Now let's create the actual, let's create the Docker file to build our node image. And once again, I'm just gonna paste this in. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use node version 20 as our base image. We're gonna set the working directory to server. And this means that any run, so run, copy, CMD, all these commands will be executed in this directory. Then we're gonna copy over our package lock and package.json and run npm install. And then we're gonna start our server. And note how we don't copy over the source code. And this is because we're gonna be doing this with volumes so we can get our uh, direct updates. But this is really all we need to do with node. Now what we're gonna do is in our reverse proxy, we're gonna create our configuration file. And it's called default.conf.template. And the naming is actually pretty important. And we'll, I actually have a video that goes in depth into this, but it's about environmental or environment variable substitution with uh, Nginx using Docker. So look out for that video if uh, you need more in-depth knowledge on this. But what we're gonna do initially is just create an upstream like this. And this is essentially how we're gonna configure Nginx to be a load balancer. So what an upstream is, is it defines a cluster of servers. So here are a cluster of node servers called backend. And a server right here just defines the address and other parameters of the server. We have something called wait right here which basically requests are distributed to servers using a weighted round robin balancing method. So this essentially means Nginx will go through, when it receives a request, it'll forward it to this server, next request will go to this one, then this one, and then it'll go back again. But if we have a weight of five right here, that basically means this server will get the most traffic. It'll receive five in a row before going to the next one, next one, and then goes again, has five here. So that's essentially what weight does. And so another thing is when I was talking about environment variables, is this dollar sign and curly brace, these will be replaced by Docker Compose using environment variables. And that is by placing this file in a specific location in the Nginx Docker container. And we'll see that when we use Docker Compose. But now let's, we have our cluster of servers. Now let's make Nginx act as a reverse proxy, but let's make it proxy these requests that it receives to our upstream. And the way we're gonna do that is in our server block, we're gonna have Nginx listening on the provided port and host, and then for the root location, we're gonna set some proxy headers. So we're gonna set x forwarded for, which is a request header that identifies the originating IP address of the client. Um, we have some other ones here, but the most important one is this proxy pass, where essentially what this does is it tells Nginx where to forward the request. And what we're telling it is to forward it to our node server cluster. So when it receives a request to this location, it'll proxy this to our upstream backend server, which is all our node servers. But this is all with our Nginx configuration. Now let's create our Nginx Docker image. And we're gonna use that, of course, with a Docker file. And all we're gonna have in this Docker file actually is just our base image, which will be Nginx version 1.18. And um, what we're gonna do with this configuration is we'll copy it over using volumes. And actually right now is when we're gonna start working with Docker Compose and volumes, so let's create our docker-compose.yaml file. And what we're gonna do first is we're gonna create a volume for our node modules folder. So I'm gonna create a volume like this. I also have a video that goes in depth on node modules with Docker and how they can be problematic. But essentially, node modules folder can be problematic for Docker because if it contains packages with binary specific to certain operating systems, then it could cause the Docker container to crash or the node application to crash. In other words, certain packages will install different files depending on the operating system of the computer. This can cause issues if you are developing an application with Docker as the Docker container doesn't always use the same OS as the host computer. So for example, here I'm using Mac OS, but in our node Docker container, we're gonna be using Alpine, which is basically a virgin, version of Linux. But so essentially what this volume will do is it will prevent our node modules from our host machine it'll prevent them from replacing the ones that are inside the Docker container. But now we've done that, now let's actually create our node servers with Docker Compose. And this is um, basically a lot of repeated code um, for each server. The only thing that's different is the environment variables. But let me just paste this in at the top of the file. Okay, so here you can see we have our first server, our first node server, we have our second node server, and our third and each of them have the exact same configuration. So they're all being built from our Docker file. They're all copying over the code. So this volume right here is how all the code will be placed into the Docker container. 
including our package.json, package.lock.json, except our node modules won't because of this volume here. But what is different with these is these environment variables that are supplied. So we specifically for server one, we have server port one and server host one. For server two, we have server host two and server port two. And then server three, of course, we have server host three and server port three. This makes it so they will listen on a different host and a different port, but they all have the same code. They'll all restart if there's a problem with the container and they're all built from the same Docker file. So now all our node servers will be in their own Docker container and ready to go when we spin them up with Docker Compose. And now we've got our node servers set up. Let's create our Nginx load balancer um, using Docker Compose. And I'm gonna call this, we're gonna place it below these. And we're gonna call it reverse proxy and it'll build the Nginx image from our Docker file. And something different here is we're supplying the entire environment variable file here because we want all these environment variables to replace everything in here. So we need all our server host environment variables, but back in here, and this volume right here is where we are copying over our template and we're copying it into etc nginx templates default conf template. And what the nginx docker image will do is it'll run something called env substitution on whatever file is in here and then place them inside if our default.conf file which is then imported into the main nginx configuration file called nginx.conf. But essentially this location within the Docker container is a way to use environment variables with nginx. Once again, I have a video that goes in depth on this. Just look up Docker nginx environment variables wit code and you'll find it. And then something important here is we have our depends on because our reverse proxy depends on all of our servers to be up. Because if these aren't up and then we try to forward a request to the back end, there'll be nothing there listening for it. So that's why we have our depends on set right here. But that's really all it is to set up Nginx as a load balancer for Node. Now what we want to do is if we just need to run this, and we can do this with Docker Compose, and then we're going to specify our env file to be .env and up. And specifying this flag right here will load the environment variables from our .env file into this file. It is this environment um, attribute right here and this env file attribute to load them into the image but this loads them into this file. So it replaces this stuff here and all the environment variables there. But if we just run this, let's see if we don't have any errors. Sweet, so we have each of our servers down here have started and we can see our Nginx configuration is complete. So we should be ready to go. So what we're gonna do now is to send a lot of requests at the same time, I'm gonna create a file called test.sh. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna loop 20 times and we're gonna send a curl to localhost 999, which is where Nginx is listening. And when we get that response, of course, what our, or when we send this request, each of our server responds with their location. So when we run this, we should see all those printed to the console. So I'm gonna open up another terminal right here. But before we do this, we need to make our script file actually executable, because we can see right now all we have are read and write privileges. And we can do that with chmod, add executable to test.sh. And now if we just run this file, so run test.sh, we're getting an empty reply from server. And I think actually the reason for this is for our context, I specified the location as nginx when that's what I was doing to make this video when in the video we called it reverse proxy. So this should be reverse proxy as well. I think that should be all the locations there. So let's stop this. Let's tear our containers down. I'm also gonna remove our reverse proxy image, Docker RMI reverse proxy. And now let's run this again. Sweet, and we can see our servers all listening again. And now let's try running this again. And there we go. So we can see Nginx being contacted over here. And then we can see all our servers responses. So we can see the weight of one being impacted. So we have server one twice. We can see basically five times as much server one contacts as anything else. But we can see how each of our servers are being forwarded the request. So forwarded our curl request right here from Nginx. But this is all it takes to set up a load balancer with Nginx. If you wanna support me, please consider downloading my Chrome extension called Witceptor. The link is in the description. Leave a good review on it. Um, but besides that, oh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments, I'll try and get back to you. But thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Have a good one.